as night and minister to us the word of life. I'm going to ask if Sister James will come. Amen. Amen. And give me a good song. Amen. To bring the woman of God, Evangelist Angelique Fluka, who's going to minister to us on tonight. And I know it's, it's been cold outside. It's cold outside. But it's warm in here. Because first of all, it's warm in our hearts. Hallelujah. And then when the saints get together, hallelujah, brings about an atmosphere of praise and the excitement, hallelujah, that just brings the warmth of God in our presence. Amen. And the Lord is here to bless us tonight. Amen. Every ready heart, every willing mind. She's going to come give us a selection after she will have finished. We're going to stand and warmly receive evangelist Angelique Fluker. She is the jurisdictional elect lady for First Jurisdiction, and she is the pastor's wife to, to Pastor Andre Fluker of the All Nations Church of God in Christ on the west side of Chicago. And she's here with us ministering the word of life, and we thank God for her being here at this time. Sister James is going to give us a selection, and we'll stand and receive the woman of God. Let's say amen for her. Well, I don't mind singing, but I really need your prayers because I've been having problems with my voice. But, um, <laughs> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor the Lord on tonight. I said we honor the Lord on tonight. We honor the Lord on tonight for his goodness, his mercy, and his love. Amen. Proper respect to the shepherd of this house, none other than Superintendent Torrance Markham. Come on and put your hands together for him. Amen. Of course, to Lady Markham, to these fine musicians, and to uh, all of the elders in this house and ministers and evangelists, to all of you, we are so grateful to be back once again. Listen, it's, it's an honor when you can come back again. Amen. When you got up this morning, it's somebody that did not wake up with you. So I honor God that he allowed me the opportunity to be back again. Amen. I honor the Lord for my husband, uh, who is not here. He is in Israel. Yes, and listen, he uh, sent me photos today that messed me up for the rest of the day. He sent me a photo of the tomb. Now you can look at the tomb and continue your day as usual. Listen, just the thought of the tomb ought to mess you up. The thought of the tomb ought to cause you to worship God like never before. Amen. It is not a fairy tale. Oh, but it happened for real. Amen. So I am so grateful for him on today for allowing me uh, the opportunity to come. For those of you who love and respect your husband, though, they determine where you go. They say yay or nay. That's how it works in my house. And I am so grateful to God that when I asked, he said yes. So thank the Lord for him. I am so grateful for this theme, people of God, on this week. Superintendent Markham, when I received the theme, faith and praise our defense in these times, I was stuck on one word. There were words before it. There were words that came after it. But it was this one word that called my mind and my spirit to rejoice. And that was the word defense. Now, some of you may not know, but I am a flight attendant for a major airline. And when I began to think about the word defense, my mind automatically went to terrorist attacks mm -hmm. and homeland security. For those of you who have lived under a rock for the last few years and is not aware of a terrorist attack, I'll tell you exactly what it is. A terrorist attack is a surprise attack involving deliberate use of violence against civilians in hope of attacking political or religious aims. You've got to understand, people of God, that the attack on your life very rarely has anything to do with you. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, he's attacking your children to affect you. Right. And he attacks you to affect your children. A terrorist attack can leave many concerned about their future. It causes stress levels to increase. It causes uncertainties that might happen in the future. Now there is a reason why on a Thursday night in the midst of this revival, I am discussing the act of terrorism. It is because Satan, the adversary, mm -hmm, the accuser of the brethren, the angel of the bottomless pit, the antichrist, that's who he is. The deceiving foe, the father of lies, the prince of the power of the air, the wicked one, he walketh around to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Right now, in this very hour, this very moment, he is 
now this color-coded system, stay with me, y'all, it was designed to depict the current risk of terrorist activity. And there were certain steps that Americans should take in order to counteract these attacks. Uh -huh. They said green would represent the low risk of terrorism. Blue would represent general risk of terrorism. Yellow should represent significant risk of terrorism. The color orange will then represent a high risk of terrorism. And then when you see red, it represented severe risk of terrorism. So I stop by to let you know that all of us, everyone under the sound of my voice, you are currently in the midst of a severe high terrorist alert. There are no excuses or no exceptions to the rule called terrorist attack. Glory to God. There are no exceptions to the rule because the enemy has no respecter of persons. Listen, he'll bother you if you attend church. He'll bother you if you stay at home. He'll bother you if you fornicate. He'll bother you if you keep yourself. He'll bother you if you go to work. If you stay at home, he'll get inside of the mailman. There is no exception to the rule called state in the past. So how can we prepare for a disaster? Because I don't care how prayed up you are, disasters will come. I don't care how much time you spend in church, disasters will come. Somebody shout, the wolf will show up. He'll show up wherever you go. He's like, listen, he's sitting next to some of y'all right now. So how can we prepare for the, for a disaster? Uh-huh, thank you for asking. I'll let you know. First, we've got to remain calm and be patient. The Bible says that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He said, when the enemy, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, he stumbled and fell. So a host shall come against me. My heart shall not fear in this. Will I be confident? One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. So you've got to remain calm and patient in the midst of disaster. Then you've got to establish a meeting place. For saints of the Most High God, your meeting place should always be the church. To show y'all when disasters start and when disasters strike, you decide to stay home. But when disasters come and when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against it. So you got to assemble yourselves. So you listen to the TV evangelists and they don't know what's going on in your city. They don't know what's going on in your area. They don't know what's going on in your house. Mm -hmm. So you got to follow the advice of the one that will provide you with the most accurate information specific to what's occurring in your area. Let me build my message, y'all. Then you got to shut off in your house any damaged utilities. Because if you don't shut it off, there's a chance that it could catch on fire. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if it is broke, get rid of it. Look at your neighbor and shout, get rid of it. Glory to God. Then you got to check for fire hazards and any household You've got to sniff for household leaks. I'm talking about all up in your children's rooms. You need to be looking for leaks. The leaks didn't just show 
hate your neighbor.
area. But God is going to give it to you all tonight. Oh, it's not in the pamphlet. It's in the word of faith that's being spoken in your life in Jesus' name. Oh, somebody ought to show with her right now. When you are 
under attack. You cannot afford to just walk around unshielded. Talking about I meant to get my helmet of salvation, but I left it at home. I meant to get my shield of faith, but I couldn't find it because I threw it somewhere in the closet when I didn't need it that day or when I didn't want it that day. Glory to God. My husband says it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Glory to God. So when we are under attack, we need one another to be strong on our behalf. When your sisters and your brothers are under attack, the best thing you can do is testify. Because when I'm under attack and I'm sitting in the sanctuary, you don't know that I just had a rumble with the enemy, but when I hear the words of your testimony, it's turned up something in my spirit.
thanks be unto God. Somebody ought to say thanks be unto God. Oh, you know he brought you through it. Thanks be unto God. You know he made way that are no way for you. Thanks be unto God. You know that he's stretching you when you were weak. Thanks be unto God. Some of y'all haven't clapped your hands yet. Thanks be unto God. He gives us the victory. It's hard to us to try us.
believe the wolf even put a wig on his head. The wolf put on the grandmother's nightgown. All to attempt to have the appearance of someone that he was not. That's what the enemy does. He shows up with his attacks. It never looks like an attack. It never sounds like an attack. Well, but it is an attack. Mm-hmm. So the guy you met at the grocery store that asked you for his number, oh, that's an attack. The guy you're texting in the middle of service, that's an attack. The one that's buying you the presents and whispering sweet nothings in your ear, that is an attack. Glory to God. But when we come into the house of the Lord and our faith is stirred, it causes our discernment to be stirred, and then we are able to recognize the devices of the enemy because you become you become wise enough to look for those devices. When it comes to the devil, you know how they say we are innocent until proven guilty? Well, when it comes to the devil, everybody is guilty until being proven innocent. When it comes to Satan's devices, don't trust nothing. Well, y'all think I'm playing. So many people walk past your way that you did not recognize as the enemy. Amen. Glory to God. So you've got to do what we have to do on the plane. You've got to pre-flight everybody. Mm -hmm. See, we're looking up and down, but we're trying to see what color shoes they got on. What color. That's not looking over there. I'm talking about looking through them in the spirit realm like an x-ray technician. That means despite what they look like, despite what they say, I'm, in, I'm looking from a whole different perspective. If you look like an x-ray technician, I'm talking about on the inside. There are so many decisions that we've made that we would not have made. There are conversations that we've had that we would not have had. There are places that we went that we would not have gone had we discerned the spirit of the enemy. So we've got to be careful and walk circumspectly in wisdom and understanding, knowing that the enemy has placed our lives under attack. And since there is no exception to the rules, that means you, you, and you. And so we've got to be careful. We've got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove and believe that God will shield us and protect us, but he will also, also give us wisdom to recognize the enemy when we see it. God bless you, Superintendent. Amen.